Merry Christmas and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Not only that, it's episode 100 and we're celebrating the holidays. So stay tuned, get a cup of coffee, kick back and relax and let's enjoy the show. Well, hello everyone. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio and uh, happy holidays. I hope everybody's going to have a really good Christmas this year. And today's show is kind of for the month and uh, it's also episode 100. All I can say is wow. So we're celebrating that. And uh, I watched a show from Three Tales RV and I uh, enjoy his videos. And uh, he did a video, and I'll put a link in our description to get, check it out. It's a really cute little video about um, five RV idea gift ideas under $25. And so I'm going to talk about those five items he talked about. And, uh, and I urge you to go to their video, and I'll have a link down to it below from Three Tails RV. And uh, tell you, out of those five gifts whether me and Sherry ever used them and how useful some of them were to us when we we're full-timing. So uh, let's get started. And listen up! So on uh, Three Tails RV's uh, list of uh, RV gifts that are practical and under $25, uh, one of them was travel atlases and uh, or road at- atlases. And it's kind of funny, Sherry and I, when we were traveling in 2006 full-time um yeah i I mean we definitely had had those and we used them uh but you got to remember we also didn't have really uh, navigators either we didn't have gps so yeah we lived off of those but uh when we went full-timing the second time uh in 2016 uh 15 (laughs) I don't remember when. Anyway, uh, actually, we very rarely ever pulled out any maps whatsoever. We did everything on our internet. We did um, our research on our laptop and everything on Google uh, Maps and things like that. And also, our apps were, you know, p- quite detailed too. So, occasionally, I think we pulled one out w- once or twice for. A region we just didn't know or we wanted to take our, uh, a different kind of way through like Nevada than the regular way we used to go. But uh, so, oh, I've, you know, it's a good gift, but I don't know if it would be used as much as it was used in the old days. The next one he uh, brought up, which uh, is under $25 and it definitely is. And I am totally behind this other gift. So if you have an RVer in your uh, family or other RVers you uh, hang out with and you want to give them a really good gift, get them one of those handheld thermal thermometer guns or thermal guns. Uh, you can get them at oh, Home Depot or Lowe's, all kinds of places, uh, Ace Hardware's. Anyway, they're awesome because you just point and shoot, basically, and you can check the temperature of your uh, RV, the outside of your RV, your tires, your hubs. You can use it to check out the temperature of your refrigerator and freezer, uh, especially if you're worried about them not working properly. And uh, I'm telling you, uh, it's a great gift. The only thing is, is I got a feeling a lot of RVers may already have one. So if you're buying one for them, try to find out if you can figure out if they have one or not but i'm telling you that's a great gift the next gift he talked about was um led flashlights now you know you got the old point and shoot kind of flashlights but one of the biggest uh flashlights i actually used all the time and uh Next to the one he mentioned, he uh, he mentioned the LED lights you can put on your head, which are very convenient when you're working on things in the dark. But the one that I used the most as an RVer was a little pocket one that had a pull button on it, and it was a keychain. And I'll be darned if it wasn't times that I'd... And I keep it in my pocket all the time. 
And so I'd run outside real quick and I'd have to grab something out of the lower container um, storage area of the RV or something. And uh, it's dark and I can't see the handles and stuff. And I, I'm always or trying to unlock your RV and the lights aren't on and it's dark. I That little keychain I used, I swear, almost every day. And not to mention, if you go to restaurants and you can't read the menu, it's because it's so dark and you're so old and you can't see nothing. Uh, those little flashlights are awesome. And they are so inexpensive, it's not even funny. But uh, the second one I'd be most excited about is the headlamp that you put on your head. Uh, especially if you know a guy, person that's got an RV and likes to work on their RV a lot. Um, and like to have their hands free when they're doing projects, especially in the dark. So that is a great gift. Now, one of the other gifts he talked about, and I, I don't know anybody. I don't, I don't think I could find a person in an RV park that wouldn't love a $25 gift certificate from Amazon. I think every RVer has an account at Amazon and has ordered things from Amazon. And it doesn't matter where they go because they can have things sent to them in any RV park almost that they uh, order stuff from. So yeah, that it, that's on the top of my list. Um, in fact, you can guys can send me as many as those as you want. <laughs> I'd use them even if I'm not full timing right now. <laughs> I just, I love Amazon. <laughs> and uh, by the way, um, I, I never mentioned it before, I think, but uh, when you get something from Amazon and it's not the right size or not what you wanted, it is so easy to turn or return an item uh, through their process. And so uh, I, I just, I finally had to do that once and I was amazed at how easy it was. So, Folks, if you want to give an RV or a great gift and you don't have to worry about buying something you already have, get them an Amazon gift certificate. Yeah, you won't go wrong. So the last thing that was on his list, and uh, this one didn't do much for me, is one of those uh, you know pictures of the United States with all the states in it and the little stickers you put in it. Uh, those are cool, and, and, and if you're really into RVing, uh, it's kind of fun, but it's kind of hard to find a place to put it. And um, then you kind of get into controversy, like, okay, I, I just drove through a state, does that count? <laughs> and uh, um, I don't know, it just depends, I guess, if you're really into RVing and and uh, you really want to, you know, have a goal to see things you haven't seen before. Uh, and you need the American, you know, map with little stickers of each state you've. Uh, I mean, it's fun. There's no doubt. And Sherry and I, I think uh, the very first time we RV'd full time, uh, we got one of those, but just wasn't you know as thrilling as we thought it was going to be. But um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of folks that are into that. So that's kind of a hit and miss. And so some people don't want to stick those on the outside of their RV, so they might put it on a board or something but I don't know it's under $25 and it is a nice gift I also kind of double check to make sure it's uh, uh, they don't have one already or some RVers are not interested in like trying to hit all the states they're just kind of interested in following the weather so I don't know uh, that one's eh. <laughs> it would be really low in my top five <laughs> so yeah that's it So uh, after that last list, Sherry and I sat down and go, you know, what kind of list would we make if we were going to make what we call affordable, I'm just going to use the word affordable, RV gifts to either <laughs> someone to give to us or us, you know, to give to another RVer. And so our list starts out at number one, awning decorative lights i think we'd enjoy those um of course people can be a little bit picky about that and stuff but uh sometimes people just don't get them because they're just kind of like eh, not a necessary necessity type of thing but 
awning lights, like the little LEDs you can put on your awning. Uh, there's all kinds of really cute things you can get. Maybe you can get something seasonal so people can switch out their awning lights or they don't take up a whole lot of room. They're low power and they're kind of nice to have outside um, when somebody's uh, enjoying uh, being outside and in relaxing in the outside of their RV. So that's one. Two would be picnic table uh, cover clips. Um, they're really easy to get and they're, you know, uh, you could get all kinds of different versions of them. You could just go to a hardware store and get clips, but um, having those conveniently nearby where you have the little uh, picnic table cover and never fails every time you want to go outside and eat. It's a breezy day and uh, little clamps on the end of the table or picnic table are awfully nice. And even if they already have some and you give them more, they come in handy for all kinds of little things going on outside. So yeah, picnic table, tablecloth clamps. That would be a good gift. Number three for Sherry and I is, at least we would suggest it, it seems like it's a lot of fun, is hummingbird feeders. Um, the kind that can uh, stick to the side of your window. So uh, not, I mean, uh, not only a hummingbird feeder, but the, the holder with the suction cups. And you can, I found those at Ace Hardware. Uh, I think you can order them through Amazon too. But And then there's another kind of, uh, how to describe it, there's a hummingbird feeder out there, and we've done videos on it, that's in the shape of a bowl. And it's only about an inch and a half high. And those are so much better than the ones that are hanging and swinging because on a windy day, when those swing around, the nectar tends to leak out and sometimes it will leak on the side of your RV. But we found that the little round cup sized ones uh, work really good and you can, and they're not as heavy and they, uh, a clip, you can clip them right to the side of your window. So if you got somebody that's an RV or that enjoys birds or enjoys at least hummingbirds, especially if they're going down south, uh, those are really nice. So yeah, hummingbird feeders, that'd be a good one. Now, number four is kind of hard to describe, but it's really a great thing to give an RVer, and it's an and it's a voltage meter. Now, not the kind that has little hand holes and's got the prongs on it. The ones that are square, and you can plug them right into your outlet, and they're usually box shaped. And I think they make digital ones, but the one I have is analog. And they plug in and they just kind of tell you that your um, your uh, voltage is at a normal rate. And you think, that's really a simple, dumb little thing, but it's, no, it's not. It's a, one of the most important things you could give an RVer. Because if there's something wrong with the outlets they're using in their space, there maybe there's a fluctuation in amperage and, and voltage, uh, that thing's going to be uh, going nuts. And and the other thing's kind of nice is if you're drawing power, like let's say you're um, running your coffee pot and your wife is up in the bathroom uh, using the uh, a hair dryer, that'll kind of give you an idea that you're drawing how much power you're drawing and I can literally look at that and, and say uh, Sherry can you wait a minute until the coffee's done and I'll shut off my coffee pot because we're going to pop a circuit here and so those that is a wonderful gift because one is it helps people manage their power not overload their circuits protects the RV and it only costs like $14 for one of those things and you can get them at Camping World too so uh, I highly recommend the little plug-in um, voltage meter. A great Christmas gift. And number five can be kind of creative, but um, everybody in one time or another need leveling blocks. Now, there's plastic ones out there and stuff you can do, but you know what really comes hand in handy for RVers? And, and you'll see this all the time. I don't know why this happens. It's kind of a funny thing. But a lot of people carry little blocks of wood with them. And sometimes they're like, where did they get these things? <laughs> anyway, So if you really want to do an RV uh, person a favor is go to like Home Depot and get one 2x6 and maybe get one 4x4 four four and cut, have the guy cut it there 
put it in a grocery, uh, put it right, get a grocery basket and they'll cut them for you and cut them in like a foot and a half length, just the whole board. And do like a four by four, do like a two by six. Um, yeah, I mean, those two sizes are pretty good. And then just at Christmas, bring the whole pile of them and say, for Christmas, I brought you some leveling blocks that you can have an assortment of anything you want. And uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, those are so nice to have. And if they, and a lot of people got grody ones, all that stuff, and they can throw them away, go burn the old ones, and give them some nice, clean, wooden um, leveling blocks. I know it's simple. I know it doesn't sound glamorous, but it's a wonderful gift because when you're moving your RV around, the terrain is so different in all the different parks. Or maybe you're boondocking and you can't quite get everything level. Even with electronic levelers, it's nice to have blocks because sometimes you get in a funny shaped uh, space and you're uh, really stretching out your hydraulics and stuff. And I'd rather put blocks in there. I don't like my hydraulics pushed out all the way. So I'll put blocks under them to kind of take the stress off the uh, hydraulics. So if you want to give a really, really good gift, and it's very, very affordable, uh, just get some uh, lumber from and cut them up and, uh, in nice, consistent sizes. And whatever your friend doesn't take, the next RV or probably we would. So yeah, wonderful gift. Uh, just plain old leveling blocks. And if you want to get plastic fancy ones, those are nice too. But I tell you, the best thing you can do for me is give me leveling blocks of different sizes and assortments. That'd be really nice. So there, that's Sherry and me. <laughs> Sherry and I made that list, and I hope that's helpful. Now it's time for me to give you the ultimate. Uh, unrealistic <laughs> RV gifts for Christmas. Yes. The full five list of five unrealistic RV gifts that probably they would love, but you'll probably never be able to afford or want to do. <laughs> so my first unrealistic RV gift for Christmas would be a propane gift card. I don't know. I think those are impossible to get, <laughs> but oh, how nice that would be to have a propane free, some kind of free $25 worth of free propane. What a wonderful gift that would be. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know how you could do that. Maybe you could, but uh, if I was looking for the ultimate unpractical gift, a propane gift card, that would be neat. Number four, well, going from five, five, that was number five, two, four. Somehow um, having someone drain and, and flush your black tank. <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, that just gets old, man. I just get so tired of dealing with black tanks. So, yeah, it'd just be nice maybe that, you just get up one day and you find someone out there taking care of your crap. <laughs> that would be just a wonderful gift. Because <laughs> I kind of like, oh, it's kind of embarrassing. I really don't really want. I mean, it's like, uh, but yeah, if somebody just showed up, started going through the process of flushing your tanks and getting it all done and you don't even have to touch it, what a great service that would be. <laughs> a little bit humiliating, but... Yeah, I love that gift. And coming to number three of unrealistic RV gifts that I'd love to have, and I'm sure others would like to have, is someone to just come along <coughs> out of the blue, maybe once every two months, and wash your RV. And do a good job, but just show up, scheduled, hello. Maybe you don't even have to pay them, or at least you could pay someone. Uh, so maybe this isn't that I mean, if you really have some good friends and they're in the same RV park with you for the winter or summer, maybe you could hire the guy that goes around and washes rigs and say, "Hey, uh, can you? I'm gonna. Can you give a gift card to number 103 and wash their RV for uh, uh, so they don't have to pay for it and it's just a gift 
maybe that I mean it's not really realistic and it can cost you 80 to 150 bucks so I don't think that's a real realistic RV um, gift but it should be nice to get and moving to number two unrealistic RV gifts would be someone that would take care of your laundry that would be kind of nice that seems like this is I don't know, ruin your day. Unless you like reading and or listen to podcasts on your phone or something or listen to RV Talk Radio, eh, laundry wouldn't be so bad. But, uh, yeah, if some services came along and knocked on your door and says, all right, I'm here to pick up your bag of laundry. I'll take care of it and bring it back. Uh, that would be a nice gift. But once again, that's kind of a humbling once again, you know. Um, uh, having someone else take care of your whitey tighties is not my uh -oh. <laughs> but yeah that would be a bad gift but not really realistic another number this is my number one last one unrealistic rv gift would probably be window shades um the uh be nice to get prettier ones but you know those silver ones you can cut out if somebody would just do that for you and uh if you got window shades and you've had them for a while they might be getting tuckered out it'd be nice if somebody just um not only bought the roll of that silver insulation stuff but that literally cut them out for you and set them up for you that would be really nice unrealistic rv gift so there you go folks five unrealistic rv gifts that everybody would love to have but probably will never get <laughs> So, let's move on to a new subject. So, before I go into the next RV major subject, I wanted to take kind of the middle here to uh, talk about some of the things that are going on with RV Talk Radio and, and actually some expansion stuff. So, uh, RV Talk Radio is also featured on some of uh, our radio stations. Uh, well, on one uh, in particular is Good Talk Radio. So uh, if, if you go to goodtalkradio.com, you can go to the weekly schedule and you can see when RV Talk Radio um, uh, is featuring some of their, what they cons we consider uh, our best episodes. And uh, we also, uh, another show that I'm on is called uh, Arizona Talk Radio, and that's also on Good Talk Radio at certain times. So, uh, yeah, if you want to catch some other episodes and stuff that or past episodes we have, and of course, this episode will be on there eventually, too. Uh, uh, yeah, give us a shout out. Go check out Good, uh, Good Talk Radio. The other thing that's kind of exciting is uh, I get to do another show now called the Ranger Rob Morning Show. And I do that on two um, radio stations now which is good talk radio in the morning at i think 7 a.m and on good talk radio for an hour on uh, at uh, 9 a.m and those are kind of fun because that's a licensed station so we can play music so uh ranger rob is kind of an old nickname i have from way back and so and i used to do a lot of redneck stuff <laughs> and i owned a farm and i did a lot of hunting and fishing and i got the nickname and so i bought the domain years ago and and the domain's not set up for the radio station at all but anyway uh, there was a time that i was going to do uh make my own fishing lures and stuff and so i just had this concept of ranger rob fishing lure thing and you know you always have a dream but anyway yeah check out the morning shows that we do now on Good Talk Radio at Good Talk Radio, it's at 9 a.m. On Good Music Radio, it's a two-hour show at 7 a.m. And uh, and then they're followed by other morning shows. But yeah, uh, it's been kind of fun, kind of neat to be able to play music legally, and and um, it's just uh, I don't know something I enjoy doing, and, and it's still kind of it's still kind of growing, still kind of molding itself. Uh, it's a new thing for me. Uh, I've got to get used to it. And it's really making it hard for me to get some of my podcasts done. Sorry about that. But I sh I mean, I need to get with it because the podcasts also get put on some of those shows. So, yeah, it's just uh, lots of stuff going on. So uh, I hope you 
come over and join me. Uh, check them out. Uh, Good Music Radio, which is basically more of a music radio st- um, station. Good Talk Radio is, well, that's, that's talk radio. So we have a three-hour cop and crew show uh, that um, a, f- a big crew from uh, Rhode Island um, are syndicated on that. We have a evening now, uh, sh- um, good political talk kind of show. Um, it's a really good one. It starts at 9 p.m. every day uh, called The Real Side. And it's a, it's a good show to listen to. And there's uh, lots of uh, different stuff on that show. There's uh, on Good Talk Radio. There's also old-time uh, radio stations you can list, listen to. There's uh, some comedy hours, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. And it's you know constantly growing with new ideas and new material. So, uh, yeah, get get used to checking out either one of those two stations. And if you have stuff that you'd like to have, uh, send your suggestions and then see if they can do something with it. So yeah, so yeah, let me. Uh, so I wanted to kind of let you know all, all about that stuff, and you get a chance go check them out. And now I want to talk about a new subject, RV related, of course. So let's move on. Well, you guys know I like it when Sherry gives me feedback and stuff to talk about on the radio shows. And she uh, came home the other day and she said she caught a video the other day of someone doing a overview of an RV show, um, uh, RV show that was customer, I mean, uh, dealership only kind of uh, RV show. And he talked about three three major issues <clears throat> that are occurring in the RV industry um, or just RV world, you might say. So uh, let me grab a cup, a sip of coffee here. Oh yeah! And uh, one of the big things that have been happening out there because of the popularity of RVers, and they were saying one of the things is the millennials are loving it, and they're sucking up them RV something fierce. Why? I don't want to talk about that. I, I, you know, I get all riled up about that sometimes. But otherwise, some of them just enjoy camping with RVs, and that's cool. And that's what that's what they are: recreational vehicles. So, anything, what thing? Anyway, what's happening now? And you guys probably feel the effects. I know me and Sherry did big time. Is now it's starting to be a lack of campsites, and uh, I think campsites. Boondocking is probably getting a little harder, and of course RV parks are getting full. And uh, it's kind of like the old days when me and Sherry used to take the kids camping up in Washington. A lot of campgrounds were just first come first serve, and it was a piece of cake. I mean, you just you know, you left Thursday night, so the Friday crowd would you know wouldn't come in. You can get a campsite. That went away a long time ago, and now it's like Claylock Lodge and stuff. We used to go up there all the time, and you got to have reservations now. Times have changed now. A lot of people are still old school like me, and they like to be spontaneous, and it drives us crazy to prepare ahead of time. But it's it's a reality that you have to face that, uh, yes, there's a la- lack of campsites and RV parks and even boondocking spots, but it's one of those you just kind of have to deal with it. Um, either that or don't do it anymore. Uh, you wish it would change. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's going to. And, you know, there's more and more people. And a lot of people are moving to really nice areas like, you know, Washington used to be a great place to live. Now it's so overcrowded. It's just terrible. So, uh, yeah. So, the. Uh, and I got three items here that Sherry brought up. So I want to talk about that. That I think it really comes down to is you're going to have to start planning and thinking ahead more so you can enjoy some of the places that you want to go. But you may have to make, you know, make decisions way out there and make phone calls and make reservations and get into that mindset because times are changing. You can't just show up and expect to have a place to stay. So, So my next thing would be uh, the second thing that Sherry brought up is because RVing is just exploding and uh, getting very popular, you know, you know that 
we just talked about the campsites and RV parks. So the other nightmare is created is servicing your RV and getting service. And what a nightmare that can be. Oh my gosh. It all depends. On, sometimes if you got a new RV, you're dealing with warranty things. Well, there is bureaucracy, something fierce. Sometimes you got to wait for approval to get things approved. And um, new RVs, sometimes if you're, depending where you're at, you may have to have some specialized parts sent in. And apparently the RV industry knows this issue is out there. But... Uh, that is hard to address without, you know, people that have RV, you know, you have to have dealerships and you have dealerships. You got to have shops and you have shops. You're going to have to have mechanics. And, um, you know, are you going to set up an RV dealership in a place where people only come seasonal? What does the dealership do when the population drops? Uh, like, Oh, courtside or some places that uh, in Arizona that, people like to go to but they leave later um, you have to look at the business aspect of it why would you want a dealership in a place where nobody's there so maybe four to six months of your time you can't sell anything and not making money uh, so that's a interesting subject and I'm sure all of us have got nightmares about getting RV repair and of course the more you can do yourself the better but you know, when you're retired and one of the last things you want to do is maybe be you know, crawling around under RVs and trying to fix them all the time. So, yeah, interesting. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. that um, You really have to do, uh, be prepared that you may be waiting weeks sometimes or months to get repairs done in your RV. And so, especially if you get a little lemon that's been causing you a lot of problems. Uh, and, and don't think that a brand new RV is not going to be a nightmare. Uh, usually in brand new RV, there is always something that's not working right. And you got to go through the first year warranty nightmare, which I've gone through it. I think what a lot of us have. So the problem is the scheduling and waiting, uh, getting your RV in and getting a timely service is really tough. Which leads me to the third main thing that Sherry brought up that she's heard in this video she watched. I have no idea what video it was, but uh, uh, I was writing these down as she was like telling me what she she heard. And then the third one was uh, uh, quality of the RVs now. So because now there's such a push for RVs and now there's a big explosion in RVs, the RV manufacturers are pumping out rv something fierce now sherry mentioned like the road track um people <clears throat> which uh are very expensive if you ever noticed uh, i've actually been uh extending their warranties out to five years and of course a lot of our um dealerships for vehicles are doing that too so it just only makes sense uh, but they're also very expensive uh caravan type thing um van, uh, they're uh, i mean i don't think i've ever seen one that isn't that was under a hundred thousand dollars seems kind of odd to get such a small little thing that costs more than a giant fifth wheel <laughs> but yeah it's um so quality we uh you got to be aware that there's quality issues and they're trying to pump these rvs out uh, fast and uh, the one of the things that gets uh, to be a problem is quality so when you're buying your RV I mean obviously you want some of the best manufactured RVs out there but if they're in a hurry or they're trying to get those RVs out which you know business is business you know you got to if you got a manufacturing industry and you got some orders to fill you want to get them filled and you want to get more orders so it's a real, it's a tug of war between quality and, and timeliness of getting these RVs out. And of course, uh, be aware of if you're buying a new RV, I don't know anybody yet that's bought an RV that their first year they didn't have something wrong. And just plan on it. So when you get your RV, uh, if, especially if you're just getting ready to be a full-timer, uh, I would suggest you buy your RV early and take it on weekend uh, warrior trips for at least a couple months 
they'll work the bugs out of it. Make sure that you know all the plumbing is working properly, that all electronics work right, that your uh, uh, drivetrain is working good. Uh, I'd test that baby and put it to work. You run your slides and run everything. I mean, everything. Uh, make sure your air conditioners and heaters are working right and awnings and anything that's got a button. Make sure that button gets pushed and you make sure it works. And um, you'll find something that needs to be a, that's got a muck and, and work out those issues before you hit the road because you get out to... Uh, more barren areas one is harder to find people that can work in the rv and two you could be ripped off or taken advantage of because they know uh, you're a long ways from home and you gotta have this thing fixed <laughs> so yeah rv quality i think uh, is becoming a big issue rv service is becoming a big issue and last but not least finding campsites or finding RV spaces is going to get harder and harder. What the solutions? I know, other than the fact that, you know, supply and demand. So maybe some people will realize, uh, let's get more RV parks made and let's get more service out there. But, you know, it all costs money. It's got, there's a balance between all this. So, anyway, good discussion to talk about this kind of stuff and be aware of it. Well, I thought I'd take a little time to talk out loud or think out loud about some of the things that uh, I come across and some of the things we're planning on doing. And uh, I want to remind people that uh, there's so many people, obviously, so much better than I am about doing uh, talk shows and things like that. And it's not, or maybe you're worried that you're not good enough. And so... Um, what I'd like to tell you is if you want to have a voice uh, and maybe you're not into blogging and writing and all that kind of stuff and maybe you'd like to do your own little type of, type of talk show uh, one is we're always open-minded to people approaching us with some ideas and we also now have uh, this is just a small piece of a big puzzle that we put together and I've talked about it in prior shows about um, uh, Cutting Edge Radio Network, which has this show and several others. Uh, we have full-time uh, radio shows and we had podcasts. If you're interested in creating a podcast or maybe you're interested in having your own talk show, um, that you have some things you want to talk about in the RV industry, we can help you out. I mean, just approach us. Talk to us. Um it, yes, all this kind of stuff costs money. There's no doubt. So sometimes there's ways to work things out where you can keep the cost down, even when you're syndicating with companies like ours. So uh, everybody's open-minded and everybody's trying to grow. So sometimes if you can offer something that will help another company grow, um, they're willing to work with you. Uh, we have companies working with us now and and we're helping each other and, and there's um, funds involved in some some cases not all the time so um, if you're new and you want to get started and you want to maybe have your own talk show or maybe you'd like to do a, a 10 minute um, RV reality or something and you want to just do a recording uh, it might be something we can do with you and you can offer to us uh, give us a holler. Just go to our websites of whatever show you're watching and send a note and say, this is what I'd like to do. Would you have any interest? <laughs> ask. I guess that's really what it comes down to is don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid to hear no. Um, you know, uh, we see it all the time. It's like when, as we've been growing the networks, We'll make an offer out to a really big outfit thinking, oh, they won't want to work with us. And you'd be surprised. Sometimes we've been really surprised. And uh, and we're the same way. I'm, I guess I want to let you know is we're approachable. Uh, and it doesn't have to be RV related. Maybe you're into a certain kind of art. Maybe you're into politics. Maybe you're into some um, unique things that you want to do a show about and always wanted to maybe you don't know how to do it well you can call us and ask 
we can tell you what we need. And, and if you want to syndicate on our one of our 24 uh, 7 shows, which are worldwide, they're not just this area. Um, uh, just like RV Talk Radio, we're all over the place. And it's growing, 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 growing. And it's really fun to watch. Um, but we also want to share the wealth a little bit too and, and 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 let you know that our platforms are available to people with creativity ideas that want to maybe get their voice out there. That's nothing wrong with that. And that's what I really love about radio is uh, it's... It takes away that factor if you don't like to be in front of cameras, and that's a lot of people that way. And now there's also the combination of live, live streaming and radio shows, and so that's kind of the next thing that I'm kind of going to mention here, is we're expanding into um, live feeds and stuff like that, and partnering up with some other uh, RV-related stuff, and then stuff outside of RV. And so uh, we have the equipment coming in for uh, our cameras because to expand your cameras into doing live feeds, you also have to buy equipment or converters to, to um, allow your cameras to operate uh, on live stream. And then switchboards and things like that. So it's kind of costly. But anyway... Uh, if you ever want to approach us with some idea or maybe partner up on some things or or do some, uh, we have a, new, a person that we're getting ready to do some uh, split screen discussion shows and stuff uh, utilizing the radio shows and Facebook and, and YouTube. And uh, it'll be fun. A lot of work, a lot of uh, investment and uh, um of course, if you're a business or service that want to advertise with us, we have so many different platforms now that a lot of times we'll set some of those companies up with a very minimal amount of payment because of the fact that the uh, empire is building itself up. At the same time, that company can feel rest assured that it's helping with the, our growth and help cover the cost. It's not really a profit situation as it is a service to those that want to get their voice out there or their business or their service. So that's what Cutting Edge Radio Network's all about. That's what RV Talk Radio's been about. And uh, we know there's people much better than we are. We just wanted to be a friendly... Um, shake it up a little bit, bring out reality of RV lifestyle and 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 kind of let you know that anybody can do this. You don't have to be that perfect silver-tongued person. Just be yourself and yeah, there'll be people out there who go, oh, "I can't stand the guy." Or he doesn't he says um too much. I know I do that. <laughs> I say so too much. And I listen to my own show and go, "Man, <laughs> I got to stop doing that." And try really hard. Some days are really good. And other days you go, man. So, yeah, you just do the best you can. And get your message out and be friendly. And, 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 and you'll get a following. You'll get people that are used to you. And 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 you got to realize they've got to become your friend or your client that enjoy you for being you. And that's... What I'm trying to tell you is, is maybe you're worried about uh, I have a southern accent or maybe I'm not the best speaker in the world. Well, practice makes perfect. <laughs> so don't be afraid of it. If it's a dream of yours, there is people out there that will help you and work with you and just be understanding and also realize that, you know, um, like us, we are, we're always under a time crunch. So I can't always spend as much time as I like with people. And, and time is worth money a lot of times. And sometimes it's like you have to realize all this stuff is not, I mean, I'm, I have my face in front of a $400 microphone, $400 just for the microphone I'm using and the stands and the wires and the mixers. That's just for this show. And then uh, converters of uh, 200 here and then another mixer, the 
of another 200 there and we just got ready buying some other stuff and it's uh, it's not a cheap endeavor so I mean you can't be offended that maybe a company would ask you can you donate just like we ask if you get a chance on our show go to RV talk radio we have a donation button there and it really does help we will n far from ever make a profit and that's okay that's not what we're here for we're doing it because we enjoy it and other people same way they're doing it because they enjoy it um, and and so donating to the, the shows that you are watching and stuff like that uh, is very helpful and it does help to ease the pain a little bit and so and we urge you here too if you ever get a chance to go to our site you'll see a little PayPal donation thing there that really does help us out uh, anyway it's not a e-begging thing or anything like that but it just helps relieve the pain of some of the cost uh, we'll always be <laughs> will always be in their what in their uh, in a red they call it so but that's that's okay uh, that's because we enjoy what we do and we enjoy sharing our stories and having some fun and riling everybody up <laughs> that's what that's what good talk radio is all about right so yeah um let's move on Getting back to the main subject of the month is it's the holidays. And this show and Robin Sherry will say and always say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you guys. Even if you're not a Christian, even if you're not a got a different faith, maybe you're atheist, I'm still going to say Merry Christmas. Why am I saying that? No, I'm not trying to offend you. No, not at all. I want you to enjoy at least the atmosphere that Christmas brings to everyone. Uh, you know, a lot of things in Christmas aren't exactly Christian related. Um, Santa Claus, all that stuff is, uh, you know, more commercialism. But Christmas seems to turn on a little switch on everybody to make them a little bit of a better person and now some of you guys really get into Christmas and and guys cool it on the credit cards chill chill out uh, keep it simple uh, sometimes just a gesture a nice thing to do for someone uh, instead of these elaborate gifts and all that stuff um, maybe make more family goals like eat at the dinner table together less electronics less cell phone time uh, things like that and, and bring it together get the family together um, and then bring in the spirit of Christmas you know, I mean giving's good but gratitude oh my god gratitude is not enough of that all of us I'm um, like us at the show you know we tell you about all these things of expenses all that stuff but the, we're so grateful I mean uh, our RV talk radio even when I miss couple of episodes we keep growing so of course that makes us grateful for you our listeners that's a big time thing but and we've been really grateful because you know sherry and i we bought a house and we bought one with actually an extra room that we didn't want we got a four bedroom place here and it's just you and her and i but it turns out oh my gosh with all the projects going on we've had to have a studio now and a radio room and uh, plus, you know, another thing you don't see is we have another site called Northwest Custom Images. And that's uh, our art stuff. We do resin art. And we love doing that stuff. And it turns out people love videos of making resin art. And so now we got to have like a room to just to work on our stuff. Because Sherry's lost her counter in the kitchen. <laughs> so, so, oh my gosh, are we grateful? We are so grateful. We love our RV. We're not full timing anymore, and who knows what happens after we retire in the six? You know, when we get in our sixties, we'll probably do you know go full timing again, uh, or maybe just snowbirding or sunbirding. You might say go up north. And so, taking the time to use Christmas to say thank you, and of course, there's the part of you know uh, uh, Christ was born. And, and that's 
parts important to those who are uh, know the real meaning of Christmas. But if you want to go beyond that and just go with the spirit of Christmas, of just people tend to be just a little nicer. People tend to be a little happier. And But there's also the downside. It, it can bring a lot of uh, depression. And, and it can be a hard month for somebody who maybe lost their husband or maybe they're alone. Maybe they are um, just came out of the military and they're having a hard time adjusting to uh, society again. Also remember that it's a time of giving. And when I'm saying giving, it doesn't have to be a material thing. It could be your time. It could be your money, things like that. So um, it brings out the best in people. It can also bring out depression and, and hard times for people. Also, be aware of that and try to help. Try to fill that gap that someone might be missing a friendship or uh, uh, companionship. Those are those are important things and and if and then if you can carry that spirit beyond christmas that's even better so yes i say merry christmas merry christmas to you your family your friends your pets your neighbors your life your rv lifestyle merry christmas and I say that with my bottom of my heart of just saying, it's so nice that you're with us, you're listening with us, we're grateful and thankful. I hope that passes on to you of like, what are you grateful for? What good things have happened? Maybe you're full timing and you're sitting outside and enjoying the sunshine or fishing more, or hiking more and getting a chance to uh, enjoy this wonderful United States we live in is it perfect <laughs> no <laughs> and but you know a lot of things are actually positive going on in politics too we have a you know a radical guy up there of course and some of you guys just you know are dreadful about the person who's up there but you know what he's stirring it up and 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 no matter what side you're on is like somebody's stirring it up and things are getting cleaned up and, um, you know, maybe the next person we have in there would be a little better, more satisfying to you. But look at the bright side that we asked for change. We asked them to stir it up. He's doing it. But uh, And I'm grateful for that. That takes a tough person to do that. Um, could there have been a better person? Yeah, probably. But no. Yeah. But I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful once again for you. And I'm grateful for Christmas. And from RV Talk Radio, I want to make it loud and clear. One is we're thankful for you, and I want to say have a very Merry Christmas. Be safe out there, and we'll see you next time. Take care, guys, and have a great holiday. Bye now. Hey, thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. And I hope you have a great holiday and a Merry Christmas. Please take the time to share, like, and subscribe to our channel. We'd really appreciate it. And check out our podcast. Talk to you later. Bye now.